G'day, g'day comrade subscribers. Hope you're all well. What I have today to show you is magic. Hey, yeah, whatever. So, yes, surprise, surprise, it's the ZX Spectrum clone. Um, just the standard 48K model. So this is the Magic 6, Magic 06. I need to learn Russian, how to count in Russian, so I could say it probably. Uh, as far as I know, from what I've been able to find, there was a Magic 04, Magic 04, a Magic 05, Magic 06, and then a prototype Magic 07, uh, which I believe was the 128K model with uh, you know the Yamaha sound chip. Uh, so, but I think there was only prototypes made of that. Apparently, this particular one here I think is dated 1994, so it's post-Soviet. Uh, it says made in uh, made in Russia on the bottom um, but I think some of its lineage also um, comes from Belarus um, the integral plant in Belarus so yeah I'm gonna say it's Russian because it says on the bottom Russian <laughs> magic electronics corporation I don't know if they're still around <laughs> but uh, the integral plants that um, has to do with some of the electronics uh, is still around actually so it's it survived the chaos of uh, the Soviet uh, Soviet Union's uh, dissolution so it's a pretty neat looking keyboard uh, in my humble opinion um, doesn't feel too bad apparently it's an Electronica MS7007 keyboard um, whatever that means I, I haven't seen any other machines with this type of keyboard so I can't really comment feels okay um, it, it's okay it's okay um, the, the cursors are nicely arranged well, we'll have a we'll have a closer look so yeah it's a it's a pretty nice nicely laid out keyboard we've got a number pad here so say so we've got nice cursor cursor keys here including a fire button which is pretty neat uh, caps shift we've got the Russian and Latin modifiers as you can see because we've got the Cyrillic <laughs> the pretty busy keycaps aren't they uh, we've got uh, symbol shift I think we saw over here as well so like a standard um, spectrum edit tab um, AR2 so alternate register 2 um, actually that one's a bit sticky I think so I'm going to press it down but yeah, alternate register two. Um, I normally see that on the you know like the 8080 based machines. Function keys, and then over here, I guess um, maybe for the graphics characters, perhaps uh, NMI non masking interrupt. So we've got an NMI button there. Inverse, I guess. Um, I don't know mute perhaps, or I don't know we cycle through the volume. I'm not sure. And a reset button. So it's um, yeah, it's uh, say so it's it's if you look at each key, they are pretty busy, <laughs> pretty busy for each key. Um, yeah, there we go. So it's, so it's not bad action. Doesn't feel too bad, except oh, yeah, the. I'm going to have to have a look at that one, that one's getting stuck. So, yep, let's have a look at the rest of the machine. I don't have much information on it, and <laughs> we've got a lot of ports. Um, so some guesstimate, guesstimating is going to have to be done. Um, we've got flathead screws along the top and Phillips head along the bottom. But, so we've got DIN 5, DIN 5, DIN 5, DIN 5, DIN 5, DIN 5, and DIN 5. As you can see, all the same, as far as I can tell. And of course, we've got two expansion ports. Maybe one's printer, perhaps, or... So I don't think there's a disk interface in this one. I think the Magic 07 had the disk interface built in. But uh, no indication that I can see for what each one is. So one of them is going to be power, probably 5 volts in. Um, there could be two joystick ports, 
We'll have a video port, we'll have um, RGB port. We might even have like a Sinclair port and two Kempston ports perhaps for the joystick. Um, yeah, so that's going to be fun to figure out, isn't it? All right, let's um, actually have a, have a look at this keycap. What's going on with this keycap? Do I want to do that? Okay. Okay, so it looks almost like a modern Western keycap, actually. And have a look over here, spring, and um, I guess membrane, yep, so it's a membrane keyboard down there. So it's, yeah, it's basically like, so this is lot 94, so I guess this is like the kind of membrane keyboards we had in the, in the 80s, like on the Amstrad, things like that. that you know, that, that's my experience is the Amstrad, these sort of keys, Amstrad CPC. So why is that sticky? Don't know, I might have to give it a bit of a spray. All right, let's open her up and see what we've got. Okay, I think they should all be loose enough. Oh, pretty long screws. What about these ones at the front? Okay, they're off. Okay. One's still stuck, that's okay. Okay, all right, that comes off. Not bad. Interesting little design, as you can see. I like the design. Okay. So we've got, yeah, we're, we're starting to switch to Western parts. So we've got a, a genuine Zilog Z80. Ooh, what's this? <coughs> Interesting. Ah, we've got a BMK. That's actually, I think, a more complex BMK. Basic matrix crystal, I believe, is the translation. Um, then we've seen in the other Spectrum clones. So I think this is a, as, as you can see, actually says on their magic. Magic. <laughs> or magic or something like that. Dated 94. Um, I think this is a 100 pin. BMK, whereas the, the usual one that we see, the more square one, is uh, 64 pins. So this is actually more complex. Uh, I believe actually also it's got uh, CCAM. It's got a CCAM um, encoder included in it. That's from what I've read. Um, yeah, so as, as I've said, yeah, we've already figured out that it's a membrane keyboard. So I think that's mom, maybe. Maybe the first I've seen on the Spectrum clones that I've been working on. I wonder if the Magic Electronics Corporation will sell me a spare. But yeah, I guess it's... Um, yeah, we can see a 94 date on here as well. So, it's, yeah, all right. <laughs> Hopefully that works. You know what membrane keyboards are like. Um, so we've got a lot of space in the in the in the case for quite a small board. No coating on it, so it's starting to um, discolor a little bit. It does look like it's bent. So what have we got? So like I said, we've got a Z80, a genuine Z80, dated '94. Looks like we've got a two fit. So we've got a 32k ROM. Okay, <laughs> very dodgily put in. Uh, and it says actually Magic, I think, version 5, 53, 5.3. 5 is it 5 or is it 6? Because I have seen that apparently there's a 6.5 version of the ROM. So I don't know what the differences are. Um, so that will be something to, something to look at. The keyboard is a bit, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't want to, it seems to be a bit stuck. Now, can I pull this out? I can't see it screwed down. Looks like it's just, oh, actually, it's just these clips. So I should just be able to unclip it. Carefully, I don't want to break the clips. Oh, I 
shouldn't have said that. As soon as I say that, one of the clips breaks. Okay, and there's a clip there. Well, I think that's it. A little stuck there. And we're out. Okay. <laughs> uh, just looking at it, I'm not... Looks like something's actually been spilt on it. Something's come in through the expansion port there. I'm not... I'm not holding my breath that this is going to work. So I've got a few kind of really crappy looking inductors. Are these supposed to be ferrite cores or something? That's That one's missing there. Let's have a closer look. So I don't know, these inductors? Something in the middle there, but this one's this one's missing it. What does that say? Oh, version MAG V64 TRD version 5.3. Okay. But you can see it's not really could have been put in a bit better. <laughs> I guess, you know, considering considering the time. Uh, it's amazing it got made at all, I guess. Now, what's this here? Okay. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Cursive Cyrillic. The, uh, <laughs> the hardest to read in the world, apparently. So, I'll... Uh, looks like some dates, perhaps. Not really sure. So I'm sure my, uh, my Russian-speaking friends can maybe help me with what this is all about and then uh, maybe this is just some random piece of paper that they just used why it's stuck down unfortunately it's gonna unfortunately I'm gonna have to yeah it's gonna... sorry it's coming off the reason is I just want to see what's underneath it so I don't know if this is just a random Os uh, Osnovania Dorab Dorab Tik uh, Dorab Tiki or something, I don't know. And don't ask me to add, read the Cyrillic, cursive Cyrillic. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get to this under here. I might have to clean it up a bit more. I yeah, might have to do a bit of work on that. So there we go. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool how it's got that that complex mag, um, complex uh, BMK on there. And so yeah, just looking at the board, something's been spilt on it. So I can give it a wash or we'll clean it up a bit. I can try and power it on beforehand. I'm not. I'm not too hopeful though, because I need to figure out what all those bloody ports are. I could probably, obviously, power. All right, these. All right, these ones have got no connection on on underneath. So I don't know if these ones over here could be joystick, perhaps. Um. So we'll have joystick. There'll be a magneto. Oh, this one. All right. So this one, this one could be power. This one could be power because that looks pretty simple. We've got one of them here. I would say, okay. I would say that that would be five volts there, and then this would be ground here. So that'll be power. These two could be joysticks. And we'll have a magneto phone which only needs three connections really. So one of these could be a magneto phone, the cassette. RGBS is probably gonna have a couple of resistors on it, but RGB output. Okay, I've cleaned it up a little bit. <laughs> well I haven't washed it, so that'll take a, a sunny day. But I did notice, uh, it looks like this is a K561, uh, K561 LN2. That is a CMOS hex inverter. 
and that's typically used on especially the spectrum clones to um, condition the input signal from the tape so it'll go through a capacitor so say maybe that one there capacitor and resistor then it'll go into the first gate uh, first inverter gate and then out to some more um, and then head off to the uh, tape input so I might be able to trace this to one of these DINs so then that'll identify the tape tape input and output uh, DIN so then it'll basically be just the um, RGBS output that I need to figure out somehow I love that BMK um, so RGBS sorry RGBS output we have red green blue we have sync and ground so we really just need four if we're going to do audio as well then we'll use all five of, of the DIN um, this actually looks like RF modulator section there not covered so that's RF modulator Ah, oh, okay. So it could be modulator output as well. Modulator slash. Um, so we've got an RF modulator. And this BMK does CCAM apparently. So there could be a, uh, a composite output on one of these as well. So maybe this one could be some sort of video output there and then beside it this could be RGBS perhaps yeah but um, yeah, I, I would try and power it on so one thing one simple test I could do is power it on connect up the keyboard um, and then listen to hear if there's any uh, click coming out of the uh, speaker but I'm just a bit concerned because something's been spilt on it um, so my fingers are starting to get get dirty just touching it so I would like to give it a bit of a clean just to make sure there's no shorts anywhere uh, of course there could be you know in some of these capacitors there could be shorts to ground but we'll see that pretty quickly when we try to power it on um, what do you think uh, I'll give it a clean and then we'll have a look just wondering what's missing out of, out of that inductor anyway all right so there we go that's a quick intro to this interesting machine um not sure if it's going to work as i haven't had much luck with these uh bmk type machines but well definitely definitely give it a go um thanks talk to you later